All right, so in this video, we're checking out the T motor 2004 3000 kV motor. So, we'll take a look at the motor here. You know, we'll also take a look at this conversion that I did that I put the motors on. This is the X Knight 5. You haven't seen this in a while. Uh, previously, it was analog. Well, that's what it comes at, uh, as a bind and fly, it comes as an analog version. And I decided to do a conversion to DJI, and it's got the VIS down here. So, um, BFB did send me the canopy and this little piece down here. So if you're, going to, if you're going to do an analog conversion to this canopy, you just need the top part. But if you're going to use, uh, if you're going to do the uh, DGI conversion with the Vista, you're going to need the bottom part and the top part. And then the Vista, as you can see here, actually screws into the uh, canopy. So it's actually hanging from the canopy via two screws, and uh, two M2, M2 screws. And then you use three screws into the canopy to this bottom part here and into the frame on the outer holes of this frame. So you have two screws on the sides that go from the top to this nut here in the bottom. And then you have one here in the front that comes underneath through the bottom piece and into the canopy. So it's um, you know, probably in a bad crash, it'll probably uh, break apart because it's just plastic. Uh, but it should be okay, I think, in most minor crashes. It's pretty solid overall. Now the weight did go up from 142 grams to uh, 162 grams. So adding the larger canopy and changing it to the Vista digital system. I also added a crossbar receiver inside there. And I'm using the um, Nebula micro camera, not the Nano. So all that added an extra 20 grams. However, it does make a difference in terms of the PID tune because I decided uh, for actually deliberately to show you guys what it, the, you know, the difference in the PID tunes would make in terms of like, you know, um, the weight without changing it. Uh, because I often explain to people that you need to adjust your PID tune um, if the weight changes, if you use a different battery, if the weight of the drone changes, etc. cetera. Um, and so you're gonna, now you're gonna see what it looks like when the weight changes and nothing else changes. So basically I just changed the motors and which a uh, fairly similar weight to the beta few ones. I think it's a little bit heavier. Plus the extra weight of the Vista system. All that does make a difference in the pitch. And so you'll see that at the end of the video when you see the flight demo. Now in terms of how the motor performs, it doesn't, you know, it pretty much met my expectations. Uh, it's a 2004 motor, 3000 kV. I tested the uh, the 2004 motor from Beta, beta PV in this one, 1700 kV and a 3000 kV, uh, 4S and 6S, and this motor feels pretty much the same. I use the same props, of course. It's just the pit tune is different because the weight's different. So the, the, the thing that's different about this one here is that it actually comes with two different motor mount sizes. So it's a little hard to see, but you can see that the holes, the M2 holes for mounting the prop comes in at two different, two different sizes. So the ones here are wider and you rotate this 90 degrees. You can see though now these are narrower. So it'll actually use two different types of props. You got your standard, um, this is the traditional M uh, prop here. This is the gem fan um, five inch prop here. And I forget the whole mounting size. It's over the distance, I think it's like two millimeters or so it's three millimeters, I think is the distance. So this is the standard size that'll work. But then it'll also work with the newer props here from iFlight. I don't know if any other manufacturers are making this one. This is the wider hole pattern. And you saw that in our previous video when I tested out the iFlight 2005 motor. But this motor can only take the wider hole pattern prop and not the narrower one. So I kind of like what they did here, you know, in terms of um, offering you two different hole mount options. So you can go with the, the the newer wider prop or the newer wider prop mount or the traditional narrower one on this one. So there's a quick look at the motor. I also posted pictures to my Instagram the other day, so you probably saw those already. The windings look pretty similar to the ones in the BFP motor. It's a little bit thicker, it looks like. And looks like curved magnets. I think the quality of the motor on, uh, from T-Motor is a little bit better. And I think the shaft's also a little bit bigger, uh, two millimeters. The bearing is a seven by three by three. I think it's pretty standard. Um, not, a, not a super large bearing, but it's fairly smooth for the size. 
And I think this comes in around 16 grams. Yeah, it's a little over 16, 16.3 grams with a full wire, but I cut some of this off when I actually um, soldered it to the flight controller. So the wire is a little bit shorter here on this build. Yeah, but overall, I think it's a pretty nice looking motor. It got a set screw here on the bottom, M2 set screw. Of course, you get all those screw, extra screws in the box as well. Very smooth bearing. Um, but in terms of performance, it didn't feel all that different from the Beta FPV motor or the HTLRC 2004. You know, it's the same size, about the same weight, using the same prop. They feel about the same in terms of like overall power and control and responsiveness. The torque of the motor pretty much feels that. I didn't really notice that much difference. So when you do look at the flight footage, don't pay too much attention to the quality of the pitune because I more or less want to demonstrate that when you make changes to your drone, but you don't alter the pitune. So if the weight goes up, you're going to probably want to increase your gains. Like on this one here, with the lighter setup, when it was on the lighter analog setup, I thought the gains were actually, the P and D gains were actually a little bit too high. You know, and at full throttle, you'll get some oscillations. Uh, but now that it's heavier, it's actually the opposite. So the gains, I need to actually go up more. And even, and even at the, even where it's at right now, it's not it's not enough. So I, I think the, the, the gains actually need to increase. So if you feel like, it's like kind of wobbling around, doesn't feel as locked in, and you're getting a lot of like prop wash oscillations, which you'll see at the flight in the flight demo, then you probably want to up your gains, your P and your D gains uh, to compensate for the extra weight. So that's just basically the, that's basically what I'm going to be showing here at the end of the, the flight footage here. You can look at the previous videos with the beta FPV motors and the lighter analog setup, and you can see how that flew in those videos. Uh, there's two of those. I'll link those down in the description. You can check that out. And you can kind of see how that flies compared to how the digital version flies. So basically, if you get the stock um, x Knight 5 analog and you do the digital conversion like you see here, and the weight goes up about 20 grams, uh, I would recommend in increasing your P gain probably about mm, roughly 10 to 15 uh, in number on both uh, pitch and roll. And then... Uh, maybe 10 to 15 on D gain as well. Maybe a little bit less, maybe like five to 10 on D gain. Start with that and then see how that feels and then move up. So uh, it's all based on feel. So if you feel like uh, yeah, if it's locked enough, locked in enough for you then stop, but if not, keep going until it starts vibrating or oscillating. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to tell the props will sound like they're kind of um, oscillating. At that point you can back off the numbers and You'll have a pretty good pigeon. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, the, just basically for this for this video, looking at the motor and looking at the pitune on this uh, digital conversion, and maybe that'll give you some ideas what to do for your pitunes when you move up from analog to digital and to pretty much anything that's heavier. Um, you'll have a pretty good idea of what to look for when you want to change your pitune. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. Here's the flight footage. Talk to you guys in the next one. So I think it could use a little bit of retuning. But I'm gonna try and fly it the way it is. A little bit of jello. It's kind of expected.
I'm not even sure if the prop sounds are coming out on video or in the microphone. It's pretty quiet. Yeah, I think on this KV the filter values are going to be a little bit different. I'm getting a little bit of oscillation in the video. It's probably just jello and vibration from it being a little bit out of tune. These are pretty close to stock Betaflight, so, and I haven't upgraded. It's like an older version, 423, I think, is the version on here. Still pretty flyable. Yeah, you can you kind of see the uh, you can kind of see it in here. It, it's prop wash is basically what it is. Strange sound though, it's not really an oscillation. Yeah, so I think the gains just aren't high enough. It looks like I think it's a little bit on, it definitely feels a little on the loose side. I actually might need to raise the P gains a little bit and maybe lower the D gains. Oh, yeah, you see that? You can hear that bounce back there. Yeah, I got a lot of bounce back. Just have to get a bring real close to hear that stuff. Right there, yep. Right when it snap rolls. You can kind of get around it a little bit if you know how to fly. Just don't don't snap roll it so hard. You see that? A little bit less there. Yeah, if you, if you really snap roll it hard, it'll it'll do that bounce back. And if you kind of kind of gradually let the roll stop, it doesn't do that. Yeah. Anyway, plenty of flight time in this one, as you can see. Close to six minutes. Uh, still, feel, almost 15 volts still. Uh, 4S850. Yeah, definitely needs more PID tuning. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments.